Hi, everybody. Um, it is October 18th. We're having a late start today. It's fine. Hope everyone's doing good. You're here at the weekly community call. And I'm Elizabeth, uh, even though my name does not say that um, it will now. Um, here I am. I'm the community manager. If you don't know me, I think I know everybody on the call right now. So hi, I'm glad you're here. I love hanging out with you all. Let me share my little screen. All right, let's rock and roll. I'll move my chat window like I always do. Um, yeah, we have a long agenda, but it's a good one. So let's hop to it. If you have not answered the question, please feel free to do so. Looks like uh, a lot of people have good uh, good things about working from home. There's a lot to know. there's a lot to like. Oh, see, a bird just flew into my window just now. What the heck? They just really want to be part of this. Of this. Yeah, I have this like masking tape, like it's super, I should show you, it, it's really not good. It looks awful, but I'm gonna get some of those fancy like bird stickers for my windows. Anyway, I was looking on Amazon this morning for that. So if anybody uses those and they have ideas, let me know. Okay, sorry, we digress. Uh, yeah, so the first thing is just a reminder, um, this was uh, from Dawn actually uh, used this in the common meeting and it was great. Um, just a reminder that all of our chaos meetings do fall under our chaos code of conduct. So in short, just be kind to everybody here. Um, it did not, it was not prompted. This reminder was not prompted by any event. So no worries there. Just um, th thought it was good to remind everybody that that's a thing that we have here. And also if you are a facilitator for a meeting, um, just mention it. As the meeting starts would be great um, and I, I added a link up here uh, to our list of kind of related links for this meeting too in case anybody wants to read that if they're not familiar with it you should read that so um, that being said we have a lot to talk about with our charter so let's jump right into that and i'm going to hand off the meeting to georg or benya whoever wants to kind of lead this discussion have at it so we've had this conversation now for a couple of weeks about starting up a marketing and communications working group. I think just short comms working group. I think we dropped the marketing in the actual document. And I think we have a reached consensus on the charter. I see there are some new edits, um, which is great. So it's still a living document. And we are now at a point where I think it's okay to start forming the group and to start actually doing things. So I haven't really thought about what, what that looks like if we uh, start by setting up a meeting and anyone who wants to join the meeting can join it or if we uh, set up the roles here and decide who is going to be the different roles here on this big meeting and then find a time. I'm open to suggestions on how you think or would like to proceed with this comms working group. I think a meeting will work like one of the days setting up a meeting so we can you know discuss better and maybe we'll find the best time for everyone i think we definitely need a meeting plan. so send out uh, a when is good or doodle yeah. to the main yeah, distance doodle. yeah I, I can take the action item. Okay, yeah, thank you, Ruth. Would it be helpful to set up a Slack channel for this group? Yep. Not anybody who wants to participate could join in that. Yeah, that's a yeah, good for, idea. Yeah, for async communication, I think. And so the goal that we have is to 
to to promote the work that is happening in chaos to streamline the communication and coordinate um, the different public appearances of of chaos especially as we are a growing community that is global and spread out over many areas across the world and so having this one working group where we all combine these efforts and then coordinate them and make sure that we are doing it consistently and as we are creating resources for ourselves um, we're helping everyone else who is doing similar communication work so that's where we are at and i, I hope we have uh, some folks here well i know we have some folks interested in <laughs> joining this work so this is my pitch uh, when you see the the doodle from ruth thank you ruth for volunteering to set that up i hope you join even if you don't plan on being long-term part of the communications working group i still encourage you to join this inaugural founding meeting that we are setting up to help shape the, the working group. So I have a few comments. So first of all, thanks for the document. It's looking really, really good. Like, um, do you, do you, the one thing I didn't see in here, do you ever see like a budget? need as well for comms because i do sometimes this like i'm always happy to pay people or like find think about ways to pay people for design work sometimes that um okay later so that is a fair point um i think that to begin with that should definitely be a conversation for after we've put together a strategy and we're okay. and we're asking what is exactly is actually feasible within the scope of the group as it stands because there's difference between planning big and progressing small right um so we just want to do a few things over time i know that there's already costs going into creating the chaos cast and I know that there will inevitably be costs when it comes to social media management and control because we're going to need a aggregation platform of some form. But ultimately, I think we can't even make that decision until we have a strategic plan in place for what this particular group is going to be responsible for. Okay, that's fair. And um, if so if you could at least just kind of get that those thoughts into the conversations, because like the longer amount of time we can have to think about the finances just the better of course yeah. you know like if you can see something coming down the road you know and you're like oh it appears that we're going to need whatever you mentioned like an aggregation platform like just yeah. could we do this like with the website as you mentioned we do with the podcast we do spend money and I, it, it, i'm guessing there's going to be some cost here as well which is totally fine yeah. and my presumption is going to be that um the first meeting we'll actually have a discussion to like nail down the charter and then the second meeting will be a discussion of roles and promises what's being made what's the goals and then probably the third discussion will be like all right let's nail down and set up a strategy um that's my presumption uh i would say because like we still got a few processes before we even understand what the protocols are Cool, thank you. So Matt, I'm adding a section in the charter at the bottom with the heading costs and how we'll handle those. So thanks for initiating the conversation. Anyone else have questions or comments about this? Um, I actually have a question. Uh, Ruth, where is this doodle going to show up? Do you think? Like, where would someone find that doodle? I think I'll put in the general channel. Because since we don't have like a group set up yet, I could, and then people would not be there. So I'll just put in the general channel so everyone can see the message. 
Perfect. All right. Um, I can also add it to the newsletter, which is late. I haven't sent it this week. I'm so sorry. Yeah. There's like 8,000 things to go in there. I just have, I'm behind. <laughs> I'm behind on everything. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but I can and put that in there. Yeah. Gail also suggested the mailing list as well. So. The mailing list. Yeah. Okay. See, my procrastination is actually very helpful in this case. So you're welcome. Thank you. That's really my strategy is just, you know, to, yeah. I always got to spin. Okay. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much for your work on this, Georg and Venya, and all those who had added comments and suggestions and thoughts. This is wonderful. Uh, and one quick question before we move on. Do we need to get board approval for this? We don't, right? Like we can just do it? Oh, yeah. I think we're fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. Um, okay, well, let's go ahead and move on. Um, the next item is that our chaos community survey is closed. So thank you to all who offered feedback and filled that out. We really appreciate you. I know it was took a little time. So thank you for doing that. Um, for the next steps, in case you're curious, we will be looking at the data, um, the DEI audit team, which if you're not familiar with that, there's a blog post about who those folks are and what that team does. Um, that is kind of an external team that is helping us in short, helping us center DEI in the chaos project itself. So um, we will be looking at those results. The DEI audit team will also help us make recommendations on some actions that we need to take based on the results and the feedback we got. Um, we will also be publishing all of this pu uh, publicly, like our um, the way we're doing like our processes, how we did all this, so that other open source communities can do the same thing. And yeah, so in the next few months, you'll be seeing things be published. Um, if you have any questions about that, uh, let me know, let Matt know, or Sean, we're all on that team as well, and Ruth as well. So yeah, anybody have questions right now that we can answer on that? No, I mean, I guess it's interesting because it's kind of it kind of goes with the comms team or working group, but like a lot of these next steps too are things that we're doing, and part of it is um, thinking about how we message out what we're doing or the things that we're working on in hopes of, if not helping other communities, but just have other communities think about the the same challenges or issues that we're um, that we're working on as well. So we may just want to think about that as well, Elizabeth, as to how we talk about the work that we're doing um, more broadly than, you know, like just this meeting or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, definitely. I think it would also be great if we could open source the questions that we asked. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. that was on the original plan, but I feel like that would be super helpful for others to just yes. take that and run with it. Yep, just to, to make that available. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously some things are specific to chaos with regard to like the working groups, but because um, we had questions about working groups, like other places don't have that, but yeah, maybe, I don't know. Whatever they can use would be good. Vinya, what is cross-departmental statuses? I was trying to make an illusion. In a lot of internal organizational communities, there is a stream that you can put onto an internal website, like Microsoft Teams or something like that where departments can report out specific statuses for like, here's something I'm struggling with, and here's something our uh, team had awesome quick wins for, and then people are capable of following that. So you could do it as like a private uh, community Twitter or something along those lines. You can make it into something like a newsletter, but effectively it's just basically a department saying, here's our wins, here's our struggles um, on a regular basis, and it works like a tweet stream. Yeah, something like, yeah, that'd be great. Is um, in, in these situations is the group that puts it out on say a, a tweet stream, are they responsible for say answering questions as well as other departments might have them? Uh, usually it's owned by the community manager, uh, the person who is managing the cross community facilitation. And then there's just a request for on a weekly basis, please pop this in and on one day it's this department and on another day it's this department however you want to set it up it basically improves uh interdepartmental communication within 
community setups. Uh, it's really common in virtual teams, um, and it's not really owned by anyone. It's just facilitated. OK, yes. So then probably yes, something like that. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, OK, so the next item on our agenda is um, the Turgia's metric of the month, which I am in love with this, Georg. Thank you for sharing this. This is like something that I wanted to do at Chaos ever since I started, and I never did it. And I'm so happy that someone is doing it. Um, so. They're going to take, Baturgia is taking a metric a month, I assume, really going in depth with how it works, what it's about. There's videos, there's a blog, like, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. So check this out for sure. Derek, is there anything to add to this? Well, thank you for highlighting it. Uh, I, I I must credit this idea to, to Emilio, who is our marketing person and he came up with that idea and he's working with different Baturgians on it. So I think it's a great, great way, at least from, from my perspective, for Baturgians to engage and share back the knowledge that we have gathered over the years. And uh, I know the chaos metrics have distilled a lot of the information down to really the core things. And these metrics of the month is more to tell stories around them again. Um, well, I love this, and we have enough to keep them busy for quite a long time. <laughs> so like 75 months, they got stuff to work on. So uh, I love it so much. And it kind of makes me think like, and maybe this is a comms thing, I don't know, but I feel like there should be like a page on our website where we're putting like resources on how people are using these metrics and that kind of stuff. Is that is that on the comms list or should it be? I don't know, maybe it's on there already. It is one of the things that as we are discussing the comms group, we are thinking about to share stories, not just from within the chaos community, but then also how others are using the metrics and share out those uh, use cases and success stories and encourage them to um, write guest blog posts or if they write it on their own, then we resurface that within the chaos community so that the chaos community becomes a central place for any open source community health metrics conversation in the ecosystem and we try to facilitate the exchange of those stories. Yeah, and um, what I call it is a content lane. And the idea of a content lane is a curation path or an onboarding process that turns relationship uh, and conversations into content. So ethereal short-term conversations about specific metrics becomes content later. And metrics is gonna be the most premier and important content lane for the communications working group to be looking at. Um, the problem with that is just like lanes in a car, you need to be tagging the traffic that's going into it. And once we get it all neat and orderly, we'll figure out what five or six content lanes we need to build onboarding paths for. So do you envision this as like a separate section of the website or would you like take this post and link this post in the actual metric itself like here's the elephant factor metric and at the bottom under our resources oh here's a story you can read about how this is being yeah. used or how do you envision that content to get out we would embed it within all matter of the website so if there's a blog stream we want podcasts going into that stream we want metrics categories going into that stream and it's essentially just making sure that our content lanes are organized well enough that we have the bisectional categories saying this is a podcast about metrics, this is a video about metrics, this is a guest blog about metrics, this is a like specific sponsored blog about metrics. Um, so the idea is just tagging and flagging all of the concepts so that they can all show in one stream, but they are still neat and ordered and separate. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, thank you, Georg, for doing this. Thank you for sharing. This is amazing, and I'm in love with it. So, yay. Makes me really happy. Any other questions or comments, thoughts? All right, we'll move on. 
Uh, I put this in here. Sean shared this in Slack, also in several channels. I was going to give him a minute to talk about it, but I don't think he's here, right? No, he's not. So let's we'll just save that for next time. Unless somebody else uh, wants to talk about that knows about the auger release and wants to talk more about it. Uh, uh, above and beyond what Sean already posted in Slack. Yeah, not enough. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay, so let's move on. If you are interested in being one of our badgers, badgers, uh, the people who issue the or who review the applications that come in for our DEI events, uh, we are building that team out. We're always building that team out. Um, we have enough folks on there right now to handle the load, but September is always a busy month. I think the next busy month will be either March or May. I don't remember now. I'd have to go look. It's one of the M, M months. I don't know. They're the same to me. But uh, so we want to ramp that team up even more in preparation for the next wave. And also, I want to give those folks a break because I feel like they've had to do several reviews. Um, they've had a lot. So uh, if you are interested in being a Badger, it's not hard. Um, it We will tell you everything you need to know about how to do that. If you want to be that uh, be on that team or hear about being on that team, please join us October 26th at 11 a.m. You can reach out to me. I will add you to the invite specifically if just to make sure it's on your calendar. Otherwise, you can also just show up. It's at this channel. So uh, this Zoom link, I mean. So yeah, please join us. It's not awful. It's super fun. And we would love to have you as a Badger. Any questions about that? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yes, I saw Kubernetes <laughs> arrived <laughs> with all the Kubernetes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it's good to hear that you have coverage, it sounds like. Yeah. So that's awesome. And just should we, have you talked to, to Ruth? Have this been promoted via all channels like Chaos and Chaos Africa? Definitely, yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, we have maybe six folks from Chaos Africa who are joining. Okay. Uh, so yeah, definitely um, those folks. We also posted it in the general channel, but I don't. Okay. And it is going in the newsletter whenever I get that done. <laughs> this afternoon, it'll go out. So um, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I will, I'll just add to like a lot of the submissions come from Linux Foundation events. And we've been working with the Linux Foundation for such a long time now. And the review of a lot of their conferences are, they're just, they're not that great because over the course of time, we've worked together so much that there's been so many conversations that have really, I think, helped improve um, both the badging project as well as the events. So I think there's a really nice, um, nice partnership there and they don't take long. I agree. Yeah, they're pretty straightforward and um, they often get all the checks because they know exactly what we're looking for. And so they've implemented a lot of those suggestions in their events. So um, those are really nice ones to, to get because it's pretty straightforward and the information is pretty easy to find. So. so yeah, join us if you're interested in joining that team. Uh, okay, next item is uh, from our Chaos Asia Pacific um, group, Joya posted this. They are running, they being this bench council, I think, are running a benchmarking conference and it's virtual. Um, they are, uh, I think Sean is giving this, but we do have quite a few Chaos folks um, who are participating. So if you are interested in, yes, the RFPs are still open, I believe. Um, and I think they've saved a couple of slots for chaos folks specifically. So definitely, um, I think you can, if the, I don't see the link actually to submit something. So if you are interested, reach out to Shoya on Slack. Um, I'll type her name in there. She's often in, um, various channels of slack she's very she's the community lead for chaos asia pacific for folks who don't know her um but yeah reach out to her she can point you in the right direction tell her what you're thinking and she can give you the specifics
Uh, any other questions about that? Good, because I don't have any other answers. That's all, that's all I got is right here. So if you had other questions, I can't help you. <laughs> and for poor Shoya, it's 1230 AM for her. So that's why she's not on this call because, you know, it's middle of the night. Okay, um, ChaosCon at Boston. Who wants to talk about that? I put it on there. Just wanted to raise the conversation that make sure everyone is aware that we have started conversations about possibly maybe likely hosting ChaosCon at Fosdem again, returning to our pre-pandemic schedule of having a European Chaos Con around FOSDEM. So there are two immediate things that would need to happen. One is the call for papers. If we want to align it with the FOSDEM call of papers, then we have about two weeks to get those ready. And the other is securing a location and determining a time and place where we would host our little event. So if I recall, Georg, when we did it last time in in-person FOSDEM, did we run our own registration as well? Just because we don't connect with FOSDEM in any way. Yes, FOSDEM does not have a registration. FOSDEM okay. is, everyone is welcome yeah. to come. The university is open. Walk on in. OK. Um, I don't suppose you've contacted that hotel again. I saw you had mentioned that in Slack. I did contact them, and I am i don't think they responded yet. Okay. I'll check again. Okay, because that was pretty nice, if not a little warm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, they have not responded yet. Okay. I'm also open for other places, but I know in the past when we looked for places, it was not really easy in Brussels to find something. Okay. Um... Okay, I have a bunch of t-shirts, so <laughs> I can bring those. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> and I, I, also, Go ahead, George. I also know that there are some who are interested in sponsoring ChaosCon at FOSDEM. So we have some funds that we will probably get. Okay. When I know this, this addresses the like, really helping ensure that at least one of the chaos cons is not associated with an LF event, which has kind of that like pay then pay again model, which makes it pretty cost prohibitive for a lot of people, at least the, just the event itself, not, not the airfare in the hotel. So, okay. When is FOSDEM now? Do you have the date? Is it posted? I suppose I could look. February 4 and 5. Mm -hmm. So if we do it the Friday before, it would be February 3rd. OK. And if the hotel is already full there and they are still open on Thursday, then we can have a conversation about having it two days before, because okay. there are several, several events going on the days before FOSDEM. OK. And I guess I would guess FOSDEM is in the same spot, that university. I assume as much. I okay. don't know. <laughs> I just took that for granted. So we have folks um, at Chaos that will be going for sure to FOSTA and that can manage this on site? Yes. I about almost everyone from Baturja will be there. So I will be there. Georg, not to like, you may not even know this yet either, but um, do you think you will have support for things like the AV streaming like we did before? Because that worked out really great, I think, at the last Chaos Con. Uh, 
Um, I don't know. I haven't figured that part out. Yet. Okay. I know it's super early. I just want to throw that out there and see if you had thoughts on that already. And then just in the notes to in the, this is like right when the pandemic was happening, we had talked to a faculty member at the University of Mons, M-O-N-S, about using facilities there. Do you remember that conversation, Elizabeth or Georg? I do, yeah. Yeah, so that's, I you know, not. I was looking, you were on the email list. How do you not remember something from 2020? <laughs> Was I even here then? I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. I think I joined in June of 2020, right? So this was before me. Maybe. Somehow you're on the list. Oh. Yeah, this I was don't... November 2020, so nonetheless. So yes, you were around. <laughs> I, I don't literally I literally don't remember what I had for like dinner last night. Like Let I alone you know. November 30th of 2020. Legit. <laughs> Legit. Yeah. So was it that the University of Mons had facilities in Brussels? Yeah. Yeah. So that was the conversation, but then obviously COVID happened. Do you want to reach out and see if that is an option? Yeah, I could. And we could just kind of do both in parallel. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, and if someone wants to join this chaos con committee, because I feel like we could maybe use a little bit of help. Um, yeah, there's a slack channel, we would love help from folks if you are wanting to help plan this event, that would be great. Just let somebody know, I don't know, let me or Matt or Georg or somebody know and we'll add you to that channel and do, do we need to um, start the like these conversations again, you know how we do, or in theory we do? Yeah, what we have done and what has worked really well is that we reserved the last 15, 20 minutes of our weekly calls for the organizing committee. And we have um, a checklist of things that need to be organized. It's in our handbook. I don't know if it's still in the revised version of the handbook, but they used to have it. And so it's, it's a pretty well established process now and we certainly appreciate all help all right any final thoughts comments Anything about Chaos Con EU? I guess we will call it Chaos Con EU 23. Will we still have a Chaos Con US then? I would say so. That has been our cadence. Yeah, later in the year. Open Source Summit North America. And one with Faustin. That's how it has been. And I, Okay. At least so far, my impression is that's what we want to continue doing. Okay. Jeez, Matt already sent the dang email. What the heck? Done. <laughs> Done. All right. This has not been done. Ruth probably already did hers too. See, when you surround yourself with greatness, that just makes you look worse. So okay. I need y'all to not quite be yeah. so awesome. Okay. I love the bar, the bar of greatness is sending an email. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a pre that's a pretty good bar. Like, I don't know. Okay. Um, sharing the DEI survey at all things open. Who wants to chat about this? Yeah, I put that in there. So um, I, I don't know who's attending all things open. I was going to attend, but then, um, so there's, I, I know that one, there's a particular day set aside for inclusion and open source kind of talks. 
and you know conversation so i thought it would be nice to you know anyone that's attending to maybe talk to folks about um the di survey the survey we are running here at chaos so yeah that's that's why i put that in there i was going to do that but i unfortunately can't we can ask i wonder who might be going but yeah that's a good idea but yeah. i am not planning on going i'm wondering i'll send a note to the group who might be going okay so if anyone's going maybe they'll love to share it there it'd be a great place to you know I'm not going either. Ruth, do you know when it is off the top of your head? In two weeks. Yeah, it's on on it's on October 30th. Okay. I was supposed to speak, but then since I was going again, I don't know if I I don't think they planned on doing virtual. I know Todd said she'd get back to me, but Sophia just said in the chat that she will be there and can possibly facilitate something. So do you? Yeah. Okay. So Matt's gonna check with someone else to see too if they'll be there as well. Okay. Yeah. It it would just be standing like talking about the survey and sharing, you know, if anyone's interested in, I know a lot of folks there should know chaos. So if they are interested in participating in the survey, you know. Okay. Uh, Sophia, if it does come down to, um you yeah i was gonna say you can connect with well i think we're talking about two separate things um matt i think that the one ruth is talking about is the one that anita is running the oh survey. okay okay gotcha. <laughs> yeah my word thinking gotcha. about <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah, no that's totally fine i was like ah uh, i don't have that um so yeah so anita uh, for those who don't know anita has been heading up this survey to um reach out to those in underrepresented groups to talk about our metrics and if we're if we have gaps if we're missing something if they're useful and just to kind of get their their take on things um so we've been circulating this survey just to get that feedback and then i think the idea is to take that and then have some um more in-depth interviews with folks about those so yeah so maybe Sophia, if it comes down to yes, you can do it. Maybe connect with Anita. I think would be good. There, so I know the agenda is already outlined. Is this like an unconference section somewhere? So I'm, I just want to make sure I'm available during the time slot that this would happen. Yeah, that's the main point. I I know they should be. I'm looking at the agenda right now. I know there's like a a socials kind of thing. Towards the end of the agenda. And this one's ten of them looking at. Well, we're almost at time, so we can want to just follow up with me in Slack and just share what you were thinking about. If there, yeah, sure. I'm only here, just like I'm, I'm happy to represent us. I just, I want to make sure I'm talking about the right thing. <laughs> so, if you want to kind of, I don't want to say put together a packet or something, but like this is what you'd like to accomplish. This is what you want to share. If it's literally just I'm from Chaos, come talk to me about Chaos. That's also fine. Um, I just want to make sure I'm in line with. I'll, I'll be at the conference, so I'll be available generally for discussions around chaos, but um, I just wasn't aware if there was something specific that I should be going to. Uh, I know my session's on Wednesday, middle of the day, um, but it's during the rest of the like breakouts. So I'm assuming there probably shouldn't be an issue if this is like a separate thing. Yeah, I'll reach out to you, Sophia. Okay, thanks.
Thanks for bringing that up, Ruth. And thank you, Sophia, for maybe filling in there. That would be awesome. Uh, and I see Matt already got a response to his email, so pff, he's even doubly efficient and productive, making me look doubly bad. Right. Thanks. <laughs> Matt, need to share your superpower with us. <laughs> <laughs> right? What's your secret? Uh, okay, we have one minute left. Any final thoughts, comments, questions, anything? Nope. All right. Well, have a great day, everybody. Thanks again for popping in to our community meeting. We appreciate you. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.